Commissioners, planning board staff, ladies and gentlemen, as chairwoman of the city of Patterson's planning board, I call this meeting of 9 to 20 to order. I hereby state that all of the provisions of the state of New Jersey public meeting law have been fully and completely met, that the notice of provisions required have been properly posted in the planning board office and with the city of Patterson clerk, that the public notice and advertisements have been published in the Herald News on 8 19 20 in accordance with the law, and that the copies of such notice and public advertisements are on file in the planning board office, as is also the agenda listing the applications to be taken up by the planning board at this meeting. The procedure tonight will be in accordance with the rules, regulations, and bylaws as heretofore determined by the planning board at its office in the municipal complex in the city of Patterson. Roll call, please. Roll call, please. Commissioners, Commissioner Fisher. Present. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Commissioner Cleves. Present. Commissioner Santana. Present. Commissioner Ahmed absent, Commissioner Savalos absent, Commissioner Issa absent, Commissioner Eugene. Here. Uh, Councilman Velez absent, and Chairwoman Neufer. Here. Okay. Thank you. Notice pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act addressing effect of coronavirus measures on the next public meeting, consistent with the coronavirus-related restrictions of Executive Order Number 107, given on Saturday, March 21st, 2020, by Governor Philip D. Murphy. The Planning Board of the City of Patterson will not conduct in-person participation of the public at all future meetings until further notice. However, public participation will be available by means of communication equipment pursuant to NJ. ASA 10 colon 4 dash 8 commencing on April 15th, 2020. There may be potential, there, there, there may potentially be a practical need for a limited number of administrative, technical, or other city personnel to be present in or near the council chambers, third floor city hall, 155 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey. In person participation of the public is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said executive order number 107, public participation will be available by call 973. 321-1579 and the meeting ID number is 711-680-0071. Planning board regular meeting of Wednesday, of Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. On the On day, day, I now hear echoing, Maggie. I removed it. It is Mr. Weedle's computer. It is? Okay. Yes. Okay. On the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence, the public may also participate in the meeting by accessing the website of the City of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov, and following the email link for the meeting, www.pattersonnj.gov slash planning board. Tonight we have two things on the agenda. Um, both of them... Uh, so we have, we have JCM Investments and we have JCM Investors. Um, Michael Deutsch, Mr. Deutsch, can you tell me which one you'd like to proceed with this evening? Uh, yes. I think we should begin with 175 Godwin Avenue. Okay. Okay, so 175 Godwin Avenue, it's JCM Investors, 1012 LLC, 49 East 18th Street, Patterson, New Jersey. Mr. Maraconda, are you uh, representing the applicant? Yes, on behalf of JCM Investors, 1012, good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners, Alan Maraconda, 726 Market Street, Patterson. Okay, thank you. So this parcel is vacant and the applicant proposes to construct a new three-story residential building with a total of five units. The first floor proposes a utility room, a refuge recycling room, a staircase, a mail and package room, and a stairwell. A two-bedroom unit is also proposed on the first floor. 
The second and third floor each propose two two-bedroom units on each floor. The parcel has an area of 2,454 square feet. This proposal is within the RA-2 zone of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Variances are requested for the following. Lot area as a 5,000 square feet is required and 2,454 square feet is existing. Lot width as a minimum of lot width of 50 feet is required and a lot width of 25 feet is existing. One side yard setback as a minimum of five feet is required and zero feet is provided. Rear yard setback as a minimum of 20 feet is required and 15 feet is proposed. Maximum building coverage as 60% building coverage is permitted and 63% building coverage is proposed. And open space amenity areas as 750 feet square, square feet is required and 375 square feet is proposed and this requires site plan approval and bulk variances. Okay, Mr. Deutsch, would you give us your review, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. <laughs> Property taxes and sewer charges are current. Persons having a 10% or greater ownership interest in JCM Investors 1012 LLC is Matthew Florio, providing an address of 449 East 18th Street, Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> As indicated on the property surveys prepared by David von Steenberg and dated October 24, 2019, Block 36, Block 3506, has frontage of 25 feet in Godwin Avenue, a rear lot line that also measures 25 feet, and eastern and western side lot lines that measure 98.17 feet each. There are adjacent dwellings located both east and west of the subject parcel approximately three feet from the side property lines. The parcel has an area of 2,454 square feet or 0.06 acres. Godwin Street is a one-way street in a westerly direction. Heaven's Architect has prepared a four-page architectural submittal revised to February 6, 2020. Drawing S1 is the site plan. Details are shown for lighting and concrete sidewalk. Additionally, the plan indicates site notes, the 200 foot radius map, the existing condition site plan, and the zoning ordinance data. The proposed site plan indicates that the proposed building is to cover 63% of the lot and has an approximate dimension of 20 feet in width and 85 feet in length. The building is proposed to be three feet from the front property line 15 feet from the rear property line, placed on the eastern side property line, and five feet from the western side property line. A note on the plan indicates that the entire site and site perimeter is to be equipped with video security throughout public areas and site lighting along the traveled public way and parking areas. Surveillance cameras are to connect to the City of Patterson Police Department system. During S2 is the site plan details. Additional site notes, the seepage pit section, the utility site plan, the concrete vertical curve, detail, the roof leader overflow detail, shrub and tree planting detail, sanitary sewer connection detail, and water connection are indicated. Bring SK1 indicates the first floor plan and the second and third floor plans. The building has a proposed height of 45 feet, which is the maximum height permitted in the RA-2 zone. This is to accommodate the loft type nature of the building. The second and third floors are to be constructed as double height floors in order to allow for an internal staircase from the units on the second and third floors to access the loft area above the, <clears throat> above the main floor. Excuse me, Michael. Can, can yeah. you stop for one moment, please, because I believe Mr. Maraconda lost his connection, so he can't hear you. He can't hear your review, so just hang on. I'm going to try to see if we can get a hold of Maggie to see if they can get IT to find out what's happening. Okay. Madam Secretary? Thank <laughs> you. 
try not to happen. Put us on now. We're up. What you yeah. We are back on, Madam Chair. We got bumped temporarily. Okay, okay, thank you for letting us know. Okay, Mr. Deutsch, you can continue. Okay, Mr. Evans, when do you think you're going to put your plan up? Well, it, it crashed when I try, tried to put it up, but I'm try it again. Okay, because this is a rather different plan than we've usually seen. Very true. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with which one did we say again? Yeah. Godwin. Godwin Avenue. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, Pete, speed up. Okay, what did you do? He's doing a flip now. Okay. Sorry about that. We lost. We didn't hear your recitation, Michael, but. All right, so I'm going to start at number nine on my review. Okay. All right, please continue. Yeah. That's drawing SK1 that I'm going to begin with. That's fine. Okay. Drawing SK that point indicates the first floor plan and the second and third floor plans. The building has a proposed height of 45 feet, which is the maximum height permitted in the RA-2 zone. This is to accommodate the loft type nature of the building. The second and third floors are to be constructed as double height floors in order to allow an internal staircase from the, from the units on the second and third floor to access the loft area above the main floor, which contains the second bedroom and full bathroom, which are part of the units below. Oh. The first the floor first indicates, indicates that access into the building is through, a re, is through a recessed access door located located on the western side of the building's midpoint. The recess doors lead to a vestibule area, which provides access to the mail room, the stairwell, and a utility room. There is one additional exterior door that leads to the recyclable and garbage room. The remainder of the first floor is a 1,212 square foot two-bedroom unit that includes two full bathrooms, a utility closet, a laundry area, an open kitchen, dining, and living room plan. The first, me, the floor plans for the second and third bedroom and upper loft units are identical. The floors have two units each, a front and a rear unit with an internal staircase in each unit. The second floor of the building and of each of the two units includes a bedroom, a full bathroom, a half bathroom, a utility closet, a laundry area, and an open kitchen and living area. As indicated on the plans, the area above the kitchen and living room opens to the loft space below. The loft ceiling is open to below from the second bedroom and bathroom above. The internal stairwell, stairway, that leads up to the loft areas and the loft areas themselves are identical in layout. The unit ceiling is at the top of the loft area where the second bedroom and bathroom is located. All four of the second and third floor units have the same floor plan. Units 202 and 302 have a total of 931 square feet, 693 square feet on the first level, and 238 square feet on the second level. Units 201 and 301 have a total of 964 square feet, 714 square feet on the first level, and 250 square feet on the second level. Drawing SK-2 of the building elevation. The front elevation view from Godwin Avenue indicates that although it appears to be five stories because of internal ceiling heights, it contains three internal stories. The applicant and the architect will provide testimony as to the building code interpretation. The front elevation indicates a stucco and brick facade with windows on all five levels. On the facade, the loft area is labeled a mezzanine. The rear elevation view of the building indicates a masonry facade for the entire building with windows on all levels. The left side elevation indicates the access door into the building and the door to the recyclables room. The building has a mainly stucco facade except for a brick around the stairwell area. A terrace is shown on the upper levels for each of the two bedroom units. 
The right side elevation indicates no windows and is entirely stucco. This is a flat roof building. The building indicates a top height of 45 feet. The intent of the RA-2 residential district the fourth ward redevelopment plans permit a more intensive residential use of land with various types of dwellings. The surrounding existing dwellings consist of mostly older multifamily dwellings of two and three stories in height. Within the RA-2 district of the fourth ward redevelopment plan, there are other examples of both new and recently approved multiple unit residential buildings that have replaced older structures that have either been vacant and abandoned or in long vacant lots. The applicant would put variances for the following conditions for this proposed five unit structure. Lot area as 5,000 square feet is required and 2,454 square feet is existing. A lot width, a minimum lot width of 50 feet is required and a lot width of 25 feet is existing. One side yard setback as a minimum of five feet is required and zero feet is provided. Setback as a minimum of 20 feet is required and 15 feet is proposed. Maximum building coverage as 60% building coverage is permitted and 63% building coverage is proposed. And open space and amenity areas as 750 square feet is required and is protected. The open space area is on the terraces that are, that are included in four of the five units and in the rear yard of 200 square feet. As this is a redevelopment area, the planning board must determine whether the granting of the requested variances to allow the number of dwelling units proposed by the applicant is appropriate for the lot and the immediate surrounding area. Residential apartment construction is permitted within the redevelopment area. A mixture of different types of residential units is encouraged. The planning board should decide whether the land area is suitable for the number and type of apartment units proposed and whether additional off-street parking needs to be obtained. It would be the responsibility of the applicant and or the preparer of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating that plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to construction officials. Surrounding land uses. This proposal is in the Wrigley Park section of the city within the fourth ward redevelopment plan. The area zone residential with neighborhood commercial areas located at some corner intersection. The applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at approximately $400,000. The applicant should incorporate the design elements contained within the fourth ward redevelopment plan on the site within the building. Proposal, <coughs> Madam Chairwoman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Maraconda? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and good evening again. Uh, we'll be presenting uh, two uh, professional expert witnesses, Mr. Evans and Mr. Williams, as well as the applicant, uh, Mr. Reed, is available uh, at the conclusion of our testimony. Uh, we are presenting an application here tonight, which Mr. Deutsch alluded to being somewhat uh, uh, unique, and we think this is a, a challenging site that the applicant, uh, with a great deal of experience, as you know, is willing to take on. It's a vacant site that's been vacant for some time, and obviously the intent and spirit of the redevelopment plan of the fourth ward, which this applicant has been uh, pursuing diligently for quite some time now, is to fill in these vacant parcels. So. Uh, Mr. Evans' architectural testimony will uh, focus on why this particular design was most suitable for this site, and Mr. Williams will cover the planning elements of the variance requirements. So that being said, we'll call Mr. Evans at this time. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. You saw our current testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Say your full name for the record. Matthew Evans, architect planner, uh, currently licensed in the state of New Jersey as an architect at the center. I'll be testifying as an architect. Yes, thank you very much. We accept him as an expert witness. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Evans, you have the opportunity to prepare our site plan, is that correct? Yes. And that is what is present up, uh, on the screen for the commissioner tonight? Yes. Uh, in your analysis of this site, uh, in your preparation of this site plan, uh, could you tell us uh, how this design was arrived at? and how it fits and conforms to the fourth ward of concept. 
Okay, um, basically the site is uh, vacant lot now, um, and what we're doing is we're proposing a five-unit apartment, uh, which would encompass uh, basically uh, the same footprint as a, uh, some of the previous applications we've done in the area. Um, we have access to the side, and it's a little bit different design than we've done in the past that we um we're, we have um the floor plan as mr george mentioned uh is a side entrance we have a central core stair and the first floor would be um a two-bedroom unit which uh, surrounds the basically takes up most of the footprint of the building uh then you you enter the common stair in the center, and then you get to the second floor plan, which um, each one of these is like an open uh, double height space for living room. It's a, like a loft type of um, unit, and um, you would enter on each floor, and you would you have another stair inside the apartment, which have, goes to another second bedroom. So it's two bedroom units, uh, front and back, which were identical, um, basically mirror image. And then we have um, the same with the third floor. So the first floor is a little different. It's a two bedroom, takes up the um, first floor. And then the second floor, the third floor have um, their own entrances and they have um, a, a loft inside so you can see a little better on the elevation the side elevation i show these stairs the zigzag lines there that show the internal uh access points for just the apartment itself so we have open um uh, balconies um for each unit so those are the four balconies the four units and then we have um, large windows for the living rooms and uh, allowing light into the spaces uh, adjacent to them. And also from uh, Godwin Avenue, you can see the large windows, different picks of materials, and um, you can see in the rear elevation the same. The, the right is a plain stucco elevation, but um, there will be no windows on that. But we have um, uh, different size windows uh, for the uh, each apartment. So we have a nice um, layout. I think it's uh, more interesting uh, when you come in, you'll have a double height, uh, big loft, living, kitchen, dining space, and then the bedrooms are off uh, on each level. Okay. And with respect to the common areas at all in this facility, is there enough space to work any of that in? Well, we have the, the each, each apartment has, uh, with the exception of the first floor, has a balcony. Um, in their own balcony, and then the rear of the building has the um, open space in the rear, which is a yard, a uh, green space in the rear of the yard, which um, in a little bit um, has the, the green space in the yard in the back. So, um, with that setback, you know, it gives ample space for the tenants to, you know, have a uh, space. And there is laundry facilities for each unit. Yeah, we have, um, let me go back to the front plan, sure. but we did. We have, um, we have a laundry room, um, their own mechanical and uh, hot water. So we have the bed, two bedroom unit. Um, we have large bedrooms. We have about almost 13 uh, by 13 bedrooms. So they're, they're nice sized rooms. And then the upper loft area has its own terrace and then uh, the bedroom with its own bathroom on the second floor. Right. And Mr. Deutsch also, also uh, discussed in his report uh, the, the front elevation being unique. I know you touched upon it in terms of its building code requirements and fitting in with the redevelopment uh, ordinance. Yes. Can you explain that a little bit, how that works? Well, um, and basically we're trying to meet um, some of the aesthetic uh, requirements of the uh, redevelopment plan and also um, you know, being a more uh, different types of units are, are encouraged in these zones. So we we wanted to bring something new to the area that would, you know, maybe inspire some interest in this type of dwelling unit or structure. 
And uh, I think that it's a, it will be a nice amenity to the neighborhood. So then, with regard to the design inside, because of ceiling heights, we still contain three internal stories, uh, even though there has an appearance of a, a larger story building? Yes, the building code um, says that uh, when you a story is considered one third, um, more a third of the space um, floor is below it. So if you have, uh, let's say, 1,200 square foot um, floor, then the mezzanine would be 400, could be more than 400 in total square feet. If it's more than 400, it's considered a story, and then it would have to be treated like a story. So now it's treated basically like a mezzanine. That's why they're not, you know, taking up a lot of space. They, they're just basically a bedroom and a terrace area uh, within that space. So okay. um, that's what would be the building code. So you're satisfied that these are Patterson building code and redevelopment of this? Yes. Okay. Uh, would that conclude your testimony? Right. Yes. That would be all for the at this time. Okay, at this moment, I'm going to open it up to the public. Is there anyone in the public who has any questions at all? Okay, um, uh, Mr. Evans, please give us a call at 973-321-1579. And the ID number is 711-680-0071. And this is strictly... For Mr. Evans, questions for Mr. Evans. If you have any comments, say them to the end. I will um, give two minutes for call-ins and three minutes for questions. Thank you. Madam Secretary, do we have any calls? There are no callers. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'll open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have any questions? So, Mr. Evans? Is this oh, I, I have a question. Wait, I see you here. Who's, who's talking for? I, I heard Mr. Uh, Commissioner Uden, is that you? Yes, I'm okay, sure. Okay, Mr. Uden and then Commissioner Brooks, I'll go to you next. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Uden. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. So I'm, I'm concerned about the last proposed last size, which is less than half of the required last size. So my question here under paragraph number 14, it is mentioned that uh, within the RA2 district of the fourth ward, uh, redevelopment plan, there are other examples of new and recently improved, approved a multi-unit residential build place. Do you have any specific example of uh, multi-family uh, buildings in that area with uh, the proposed or similar uh, large size? Well, what we'll do is, um, in the course of Mr. Williams' testimony as the planner commissioner, I think that's where we're going to address you know, the variances that are required. And we do, as a matter of experience and approvals from this board, have numerous approvals in the particular board here of residential units of this nature and size uh, being approved by this board, but I would ask respectfully if we could defer that question to Mr. Williams because it's more of a planning question. Commissioner Uden? 
Yes. Oh, so I have to wait for the answer. Well, well, I mean, just to clarify, or am I going to get the answer later? Yeah. So yeah. Right. yeah. When Mr. Right. When Mr. Uh, Williams, uh, when he gives his report, you can ask then. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Brooks. Uh, Mr. Evans, I'm confused about your layout. It really sounds strange to me. I mean, as it is, you're putting a five family on a 25 by 98 lot. That is one of my, that's a concern. But the, the, the real concern I have is the confusion between the first, the second, and the third floor. Now, the, second, the first floor is in, they're entering where where is the third floor, the first floor's entrance where is that coming from is that coming from a parking area where where do you go into this building there's a side entrance to the building there's an entry walk um to the in, uh along the side of the building so when you enter the build the site you walk along the um the walkway along the left side of the building and the main entrance is, is to the, to the um, basically on the left side of the building. We show it on our floor plan here. So this okay. is the, the mail package room is um, is adjacent and utility. And okay. we have an exterior access to the garbage and recycling for the tenants. The main stair, that's a core stair that comes up to the, the first from the first floor. Right. The second floor and then okay. to the third floor above. So okay. within that, you only have one entrance to the apartments, um, and that's a main door at the landing when you come up to the first stair for the for the second floor unit. Then you continue on to the to the um, to the next unit, which has the same entrance. So that's why it's a second and third floor plan on this. Then on the right to that, it's second and third floor loft plans. So this is, these are basically the same, and they're just copied on top uh, for the second and third. So they're, they're basically two bedroom apartments. So what, you, so what you're showing and what you're saying is that the first floor is the entire width of the the first floor, the first floor unit, with the exception of the storage and all of that, and the vestibule oh, yeah. and the staircase. The shaded area you can see on that first ground right. floor is, is the unit. Okay. Now that unit doesn't have a loft or anything. We only the second and third unit is the one with the loft, right? Right. Okay. So when you go into there's five units. I mean, it's four units between the second and the third floor. No. Yes. Okay. So when you go into the, the the second floor, the second floor, where's the loft at? Is the, the loft? Are you showing on this thing that the loft is like at? Where's the loft on the All second right, floor? Zoom in a little bit. I maybe you can see a little better. So if we look at the front units, you see okay. the door here at the entrance of unit. Yes. Yes. Have a, when you walk in, there's a closet behind the door. You go okay. to your kitchen, big open living kitchen area in the middle okay. here. Okay. That's double height space. The, the wall of the kitchen here is the, the stove, sink, and refrigerator. Now we have a hallway, which is mechanical room and laundry. You walk the, down this area here at the hallway, and then you come up these stairs. This is the stair that goes to the loft. So if you look at the floor plan next to that, you can see how it's all open here. And then you, you're coming up, and then the gray area here is the landing, and then we have a bedroom, a terrace, and, a, and its own bathroom. So they have their own full bathroom, and then we have, this is all open space um, that looks down onto this big um, community area, which is the living, kitchen, and dining area. So it's a it's a double height space for the unit, so they're nice um, loft type of uh, units. Okay, so so you're saying the the second floor unit has the loft with the steps that where you showed up that that goes the loft place is where the bedrooms are in the bathroom. 
Yeah, the bad number is the bad number of a bedroom. So if you look back at the second floor, like I said, the kitchen the dining room is here. Go back to the second floor. Point your arrow. Okay. okay. I see the door. Exactly. I see the door. Yes, to the bedroom. Level? That's the main level. It's the main level that's with the kitchen and dining. So there's a bedroom on each level. Like okay. there's a bedroom on the first and there's a bedroom okay. similar to okay. the terrace above it. Okay, so point to where you go to the loft at on that unit. So go to the loft. So I come in the front door, and then I right. come this way, and then I go up the stairs. Once I'm up, the, this is the stairs coming up on the second floor of the loft plane. And I have a little landing, and then there's a door, and then there's a, a bedroom, and a full bathroom on that with the terrace. So, 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 you're, so you're, you're not showing, I mean, you're only showing the second floor, you're not showing the third floor? <laughs> Is there a third floor? Same. So it's it's the same exact um, thing. I mean, I can copy these two plans over, but as I, I, I stay on the plan, it says unit 202 and 302 um, are the same. So it's the main floor and then the loft floor. Right. So, so there are mirror images with respect to the two units, uh, Commissioner Brooks, with respect okay. to the two levels. So, what that's saying would be a redundancy to show it again, but it's like that. Okay, okay. All right, here's what I want to know. So, the third floor, you're saying you're only, have, you're only using four, four floors. You're not using, you only have four floors. Is that correct? So, it's considered three floors because the size of the of the uh, mezzanine on each level is less than a third of the floor plan. So let's say, as I gave an example, 1,200 square feet, a third of that would be 400. It's, it's, that's what it would be. If it goes over 400, then it's considered a full floor. So that the, the, uh, the, the International Building Code considers this only as a mezzanine, not as a full uh, floor. Well, let me ask you this for the mezzanine. Where, if, 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 if there, I know you usually have uh, fire windows, and, and so that would take care of it. That's why you don't have a rear entrance. Is that what it is? Because you have fire windows in these places? Because my concern is the second floor is, has this mezzanine, but the mezzanine isn't built out from the, it, was, it has to be built out, no? It, or is it a hangover? Of the building? No, it's inside the it's it's inside the unit. So you have a small um you have a stair going up uh to the loft area. But it's, all, it's all internal. Yeah, it's all internal. So there's no extra there's no extra stair that you can access. You know. Okay, like, so by you know, saying it's a double it's a double um the the, the the actual flooring is a double flooring. That's so you can allow to be ha have that um, mezzanine? Yeah. Is that so what you're like, doing? Right. So, like, I know how you have in some places, either that sometimes you do an adaptive reuse or something like that, where you have such a high ceiling where you say, oh, can I put in another, you know, uh, another loft or another bedroom upstairs? And that's what we, we used as a, as a guide. In fact, Commissioner Brooks, that design took place in several of the uh, conversions and the rehabilitations of the uh, mill buildings in the historic district and because of the high ceiling effects. But this, is very, this is a very uh, popular design, actually, in rehabilitation and, and construction now. Buildings that are um, much more uh, dense than this one. It, it usually is where they have the law set is is for it is like in a uh, a re renovation of State Mill Street or the Trenton Avenue uh, buildings. I've never seen you put a loft in an area that, that is so small. I, I, I just, I, that, that seems very confusing to me. It really doesn't seem safe to me. And I know that you probably are using, you are using a fire, the fire window approach, I guess, where you have a fire rated windows. And that's why if some of the fire happened, they could, I guess, jump out the windows. Is that what it is from the mezzanine? We have rescue windows. And also we have 
uh, full sprinkler. These all, all these new buildings, any multifamily building we do now is all fully sprinkled. So okay. you okay. know they're, they're not gonna we're not gonna try and um, the the only reason we do it this way is because the code allows certain conditions and you have to meet those uh, specific conditions or else you know you have to design it a different way. So this conforms with the uh, international building code for those Okay things. and I have one more question. The the second and third floor has two bedrooms. One is on the main area and one is in the loft, right? Yes. What what does the first floor? The first floor has one bedroom? The bed no, the first the first first floor, ground yeah. floor. Ground floor, yeah. The ground floor, if you come in off the door the door uh here, we have a hallway, coat closet, then we have a large open kitchen dining living room. It's a big unit. Then you come back around here, you have a handicapped bathroom here. You come down the hallway, we have laundry, mechanical. And then um, we have the two bedrooms with a, um, with a, has, one has a, uh, its own bathroom in there. So um, we have large bed bedrooms in the back. So that basically takes up the ground floor. So that two bedroom, instead of being, uh, you know, stacked, it's, it's, it takes the, the full floor. More of a conventional so apartment. So is this, is this, it was my understanding that this was uh, five units. Now you're telling me it's six units? No, no. no. Um, what is it? What one is two bedroom one bedroom? unit. One two bedroom unit on the ground floor. Very standard type of unit. Okay. Where's the large two bedroom? A large two. Okay, so the third floor doesn't have two bedrooms? They are all, it's, it's five two bedrooms total. The first floor is is one level, and the other units are stacked with the mezzanine bedroom. So we got one two bedroom unit on ground level, and then the uh, mezzanine style units on the second and third. All four units containing two bedrooms. Ah, uh, okay. I think it's a terrible layout, but uh, okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, are there any other questions for Mr. Evans? Is this for Mr. Cleve? I do. Yes. Can you put your phone on here? Everyone continues. Everyone continues. There's someone here having a conversation. I don't know if you're going to finish yours. Yes, yes. 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 Yes,
kind of, um, are there fire escapes or anything like that? I mean, this is the only thing in and out? We have emergency um, escape and egress windows for each apartment. We have the balconies, and um, it's a fully fire sprinkler building. So in, um, in this type of use group, which is multifamily, um, all the common areas, all the apartments, everything is fully sprinklered. And um, with a fully sprinkler building, it's pretty much the safest um, type of dwelling unit you can do um, these w without um, with the fire suppression. And I might also add, Commissioner, and I know Mr. Evans can, conf Evans can confirm this, this building were to be constructed like all five-unit multifamily buildings, would be, would be required to be in full compliance with the state of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs fire and building code regulations. So there's a double protection provided vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Patterson Fire and Building Codes and the state of New Jersey, DCA. So as Mr. Evans alluded to, there's several levels of protection with regard to sprinkling systems, sprinkler systems, and means of egress. This is a, this is a fairly common uh, level of protection in that regard. So, uh, okay, another question. So you said the entrance is on the side of the building? Yeah. Which, which on, on the diagram, can you show me where the front of the, front of the building would be on Godwin Ave? Would be on Godwin Ave? Right here is the front, and then you come around the left side, and you have the main entrance here, which is a, a you know, a common lobby, and this, the stair, the core is right here in the middle that accesses all the units. So the front of the building, what what does the front of the building look like? Um, if the entrance is on the side of the building, what does the front of the building actually look like? So we'll go zoom in on the building here. So here's your front entrance here. You have the, the uh, we have the number of the building, we have a person here, and you have um, the access along the side. The unit would be the first floor unit, then we have the second floor unit, and then the third floor unit above that. And Mr. Evans, with regard to the front uh, design, uh, I, I think maybe perhaps the commissioner would want to hear how you design the front of a building like this with regard to the side entrance. What do you do with the exterior? I know it has to comply with the redevelopment zone, and it looks excellent, but can you explain what that looks like in reality? Okay, so what we have on our front elevation, we, we've, um, we've done a lot of things that are very contemporary looking. We have large windows. You can see how these are oversized windows for these units. We have large windows. We have, um, then we have smaller windows for the, um, the bathrooms. And then we have this open area, which has um, a decorative railing, which would be open to... Um, for the tenants, it's a little balcony area for the, uh, the tenants. But you can see how we have these large windows for each level. And then basically the first level is going to have a little smaller in the front because it's on the, basically on the first floor. You don't want to have it too big. So then we have landscaping in the front. And we have a mix of materials. We have brick and stucco and metal railings. And um, we have nice... Um, uh, windows, which would be done with black frame, and um, all those accents would um, enhance the aesthetic appeal of this of this area. And this design that you portray uh, on this plan is strictly in accordance with what the redevelopment plan requires for exterior aesthetic appearance. Yeah, we want to comply with that and just go a step further and give right. it a little bit more. Uh, so there's a little bit of creativity on the exterior appearance. Yes. Right. Commissioner, okay. please. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I, I just want to make it clear. I just want to make sure I'm clear. All right. Um, the whole first floor is one apartment. Can we go back to those? Uh, can you put that layout for me? Yes. So, like, the whole first floor is one apartment, and obviously that would be for someone who was challenged or handicapped or something like that, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then the second the second floor um, has 
a one bedroom, but also has everything else you're discussing. It has the kitchen, but there's there is one bedroom on the first on there that particular level, correct? There is one bedroom there, and then it goes up to a loft. Yeah. And you have a second, and you have a second bedroom, correct? Yes. Okay, and then you have the next level, and you have a bedroom there. And you also have all the amenities, the you know the, the the bathrooms, the dishwasher, the whole thing, utility room, and then that level goes up to a loft, correct? Correct. Okay, and those two lofts in particular also have a terrace. Yes. Okay, so each lot has a terrace, so you can get out of the apartment, God forbid you had to, or a language could get up there. And of course you're saying there'll be a sprinkler. I, 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 I personally I think that this is a you know, I know this is an unusual, unusual layout. No question about it. Um I if you have the sprinklers you're in compliance with all of that, and I'm sure if we're not, then you'll be told. But um I think I I don't see any problem with the actual layout. I know it's unusual. It's very unusual, I will give you that. But I don't think there's any I mean, it's a redevelopment area. I think it, uh, it I, I personally don't have any issue with it. I, I think that, that um, you know, the city could support this. But in any event, let's move on. Do we have another, you want to bring in uh, your planner? Uh, I'd like to see if we uh, call Mr. Reed next, I believe. Okay. Okay, Mr. Reed, please. Please raise your right hand. You saw our front testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You're muted. Um, give me one moment, please. Okay, yes, go ahead. Okay, say yes, your full name for the record. Anderson Reed, RBID. Okay, thank you, Mr. Reed. Uh, for the record, Andy, your position with JCM? I'm um, Director of Development. Okay, and as uh, such, you're very familiar with this project uh, concept? Yes. Okay. Uh, obviously, you've heard Mr. Evans' testimony, the commissioner's comments and questions, and Mr. Deutsch's report. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, in terms of this design and your other development within the uh, fourth ward redevelopment, um, could you give us some background about other projects in the area? I know one of the commissioners alluded to that as well. Um, you know, we have. Uh... We have several developments, and actually, we really changed that area. Um, we removed a lot of the, the, the decay and the dilapidated uh, buildings or vacant um, lots, you know, with debris and um, all types of needles and stuff, you know, strong about it. We have really been doing a lot of development in that area and bring a lot of positive change to that area. I mean, I know, like, um, the chairwoman, um, just made a comment. I appreciate a comment. I mean, this it is. Uh, it's a little different from the designs we have brought before. But this is a more uh, urban, upscale look that they're they're doing now. And I believe we're really we're working this area. It will bring uh, a new modern cross uh, perspective to this area as well. Okay, Andy. I also wanted to further elaborate on your comments regarding other developments in the area. We do have approvals of fairly comparable buildings uh, at 118 Fair, and I think also um, at 118 Garden as well. Yeah, 118 Garden as well. 47 Garden Ave, uh, 118 Fair, 118 Hamilton Ave. Um, yes, we do have several in the area. Right. And you're confident that um, this design uh, can, can be functional from your experience with tenants? Without a doubt. Yeah. And the things that we're building, we're letting them out, so without a doubt. Right. And in terms of uh, overall security, I know you have a concept plan that works very well in the fourth ward. Obviously, this is not a very huge project, but what would your what would your company be committed to in terms of security for this particular building? Uh, obviously, yeah. the buildings will be uh, uh, well lit, like all the rest of our buildings. Uh, we do have 24-hour uh, arm and unarmed security patrols going through all our properties. We have our own command center, and all of our security is piped into the camera system at the uh, Patterson Police Department. All right. All right. That's all I have for Mr. Reed at this time, subject to any questions, of course. 
Okay, so I'm going to open up to the public. If anyone has any questions of Mr. Reed based solely on his testimony, please call in at 973-321-1579. And the uh, meeting ID number is 711-680-0071. I'll give it two minutes for call-in, three minutes for comments. Thank you. No comments, questions. Comments at the end. Secretary, anyone calling in? Um, and commissioners, we have 10 more seconds. Okay. All callers at this time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, so at uh, this moment, I'm going to ask Mr. Maraconda to please call your next witness. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I am so sorry. Yes, we huh. can. I skipped huh. over that and I <laughs> thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> Commissioners, okay, please ask who has a question. I, I assume uh, Commissioner Brooks, you'd like to ask. Can I uh, interject one moment, Mr. Reed? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I do. Thank you. You can proceed. Okay. Commissioner Brooks, you want to ask? Ms. Yes. Okay, Mr. please go ahead. Mr. Reed, um, Godwin Avenue. It has a Goblin Avenue where you're putting this building. I wrote by it. Um, why wouldn't you consider a four family better than a five family? I mean, it's the, 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 the actual space itself. It's like at one point it was a one family house. And, and to put it on 24 by 98. That's really pushing it. Why would you? Why would you want to put a five film? I understand why you would want to do it, but I just don't think that that's um. I I think that's over overkill on that. Yeah, but, but, uh, um, but from you know from our pers from my perspective, our perspective is the the unit size would be included with the uh, second bedroom and the mezzanine area. So the unit size would be a very comfortable unit size with a nice circulation inside the um, um, unit. That's one of the reasons also why we have the second bedroom in the mezzanine area. So it's, it's not taking up really much more space than any other building will have. And again, like the unit size, not like they're going to small units and tiny barrels. You know, it's a, a very efficient circulation in the building. And it's really taking up no, I mean, I'm not going to be the planner, just let me speak on as far as the planner and the vanish and the setbacks, but it's not taking up much more lock ups than any other building in, the, in that area. Have you done this in, to any other building? Well, the, the actual size of the building, I mean, we have put a, a, a you know, obviously we have put a six family on like a, a 30 by 100 lot or a 32 by 100 lot, which is not that much bigger in it, but this is just a five unit. What we could do also, Commissioner Brooks, is uh, during the course of Mr. Williams' testimony, you know, we could address uh, any concerns about the number of units in terms of the, the density and square footage of the unit and property. Uh, that we would, of course, be amenable to having a discussion among my experts and the applicant as we proceed as well. I wish you would. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other commissioners? Any questions of Mr. Reed? Okay, hearing none. Now I will ask. No. Yes, you have. A, somebody has a question. No, no. Okay. 
Ginger Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I thought I heard yes. Okay, so yes. Uh, Mr. Maraconda. Okay, please yes. look at this witness. Thank you. We'll call Mr. George Williams, our planner. Please raise your right hand. You swore a front testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I most certainly do. Will name for the record? Good evening, Commissioners. My name is George Wheel Williams. I am representing the Nishway Group, a planning consultancy located in Montclair, New Jersey, at 105 Grove Street, Suite Number One. And Mr. Williams, just for the record, I know you appeared before this board numerous times. Your professional background. Certainly. Thank you, uh, Council. Um, I completed my graduate studies at the Rutgers Graduate School, now the Blaustein School for Policy Planning and Development. I am licensed by the State Board of Professional Professors in New Jersey and been nationally certified by the yes. Air And we accept him as an expert uh, witness. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you again, Mr. Williams. Uh, Mr. Williams, obviously you've had the benefit of uh, not only hearing our testimony and dialogue with the commissioners, but also Mr. Deutsch's report. Yes, that is correct. Right. And obviously, in preparation for this hearing, you had uh, more than adequate opportunity to analyze and review the site. So we're going to let you proceed and keep in mind during the course of your testimony the the direction or discussion that took place, if you would, regarding uh, the preliminary system. Certainly. Uh, first of all, good evening, commissioners. Thank you for this special meeting. Hope everybody and yours are well. Um, and uh, thank you for accepting me as a, a witness again uh, to give testimony in the planning context. Um, just to go over some of the basic facts for record, uh, you've heard much of this from Matt Evans already. Um, but for record, again, this is 175 Godwin, uh, block 3506, block number 36. Uh, and as mentioned by both Matt Evans and uh, Mr. Maraconda, and your work planner, Mr. Deutsch, this property is located squarely in your fourth ward redevelopment area in what's labeled the RA2 district. And I think Mr. Deutsch mentioned this, but it's perhaps worth repeating uh, as a preface for my testimony that the intent of the RA2 district in the redevelopment area is to permit a more intense residential use of land with an access to dwellings. Density is maintained in a medium range while building height is kept low enough to be generally compatible with one and two family residential development. I thought it was important just to repeat that intent of the RA2 district uh, for two purposes. One, uh, my opinion to support what is being submitted to you this evening by uh, the applicant in terms of both masking and design, but also to underscore um, for the board members the intent and purpose of a redevelopment area, which is specifically to incentivize development that redresses the negative characteristics of a neighborhood, that is, abandoned properties, vacant properties, substandard development, uh, et cetera. Tax arrearages, and the list goes on. And one of the ways a redevelopment plan or redevelopment designation it does incentivize that development is by offering uh, unique um, bulk and area standards, design standards, and tax incentives. So keep in mind, this is um, almost a poster child for what a redevelopment infill project would look like, removing a vacant lot, replacing it with a uh, rateable that not only generates taxes for the municipality, but more importantly, um, removes the condition of uh, I'm a bit old school, what we would have referred to as blight when I was in graduate uh, school. So again, removing vacant properties, abandoned properties, deteriorated properties, and replacing them with contemporary developments that comports with your redevelopment. So just that's just a broad context. I know this board has heard me uh, laud the um, redevelopment planning process in Patterson because um, in point of fact, unlike many other municipalities in which we appear or represent, the redevelopment plans don't perform. In Patterson, uh, since I've been working with JCM uh, and appearing for this board, we have seen a number of development proposals come from the planning board and zoning board uh, be approved, I think in large part because the uh, proposals that are prepared by the applicant and their team are of a high caliber, but more importantly, 
they are advancing the goals and objectives of your redevelopment plan. So that's the uh, the broad um, brush of context. Uh, the references that we'll be seeking were described uh, by Mr. Voyage. Uh, repeated by Matt Evans, but again, it's minimum lot area, minimum lot width, minimum rear yard setback, minimum side yard setback, maximum lot coverage, and open space amenities. I will discuss each of those individually in the context of the C2 and C1 variances. Um, but before I do that, I would like to go back to the redevelopment plan for a second. Um, again, the purpose of the plan uh, is to catalyze revitalization within the neighborhood as well as the fourth ward uh, redevelopment area in total. Um, the redevelopment plans for the fourth ward specifically are the following. Re again, revitalize the fourth ward of the city, reduce uh, the blighting impacts of abandoned and vacant properties, as you see on page 27 of the plan. Provide quality new housing options for area residents, also on page 27 of the plan. Finally, in terms of design standards in the redevelopment area, the redevelopment plan on page 51 recommends that the design approach for the redevelopment area include uh, quality design standards, an effort to be contemporary uh, with a, uh, a nod to um, the context of the surrounding land use patterns in the immediate vicinity. What we've noticed in many occasions is that can be a bit tricky in some of the areas of the redevelopment uh, neighborhoods because of the level of deterioration or substandard development. But in the proposal you have before you, it's the design team's intent to be contemporary and creative in their approach to this very in your redevelopment area. With that, um, and I hope to be able to answer uh, one of the commissioner's previous questions, I'm going to turn to an exhibit, uh, and I don't know if we need to mark that, Mr. Aguavila. Mr. Aguavila, for the record, be our first exhibit, right? Mr. Aguavila? So, Mr. Weedle Williams, can you send this to me? Because I don't think I received this. Uh, it was it sent earlier this afternoon from Simran Riar. Okay, I'll check into that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I apologize for the late uh, uh, transmittal. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I couldn't hear you. Okay, I know you couldn't. So they're asking if this should be uh, entered into... Um, as an exhibit. As an exhibit. Thank you. As an exhibit. I'm just off tonight. <laughs> yes, we should. Under normal circumstances, I know the studio is basically... Um, Disseminates all of the uh, copy of these to all the members, but given the uh, virtual meeting, we right. should mark this. Hey, thank you. Hey, please continue. So, for the record, um, this exhibit being offered is um, very similar to others that I've presented to this board. It's a series of um, images presented in a storybook format. Uh, including um, captures from your land use documents and then also images that were for our site visits. Should I, should I continue? Yes, please. I'm sorry, okay, so um, very quickly. I'm sorry. Um, I'm Melinda, did you get all that? You have it as the exhibit, you marked it? I didn't physically mark it, but I put no, it, I, no. I okay, put it in that. as A1. Okay, good. Yes. All right, thank you. Yes, continue, Mr. Williams, please. Mr. Ancoviva should do that as well. Yes. The image is just an aerial photograph of the um, site uh, indicated by the bold yellow boundaries. You can see it's in the middle, or, well, not in the middle, to the left of a large city block. Uh, that city block is um, uh, along Godwin Avenue. The next image, and you can see, I'm sorry, let me go back. Uh, again, you see most of the lots on this city block are relatively narrow and long, with some exceptions as you get to uh, the middle of the block and then the far right side of the block going towards the, the rail line. Slide number three, um, just a excerpt from your zoning map indicating again what we've shared already. This is in the RA2 district.
Slide number four begins to give you a better sense of um, the lot itself, and then you've seen the uh, site plan and drawing from Matt Evans. This is the unique lot that we're dealing with now. You can see it's uh, undeveloped, narrow, and flanked on both sides by um, other development in the area. Uh, slide number five gives you a sense of some of the land development pattern in the area. Again, it is varied. Uh, in slide number five, you see 177 to the left, 179 to the right. Uh, this is new construction in the area that what appears to be uh, two and or three family dwellings that are all three stories. And you can see their sidewalk or their, um, excuse me, their steps kind of cantilever out into uh, the front yard or sidewalk area. These two units do provide parking. And then further uh, down the road at 184 and 182, you have a different type of housing development. Again, uh, three stories uh, with several units. Each of these, we believe, have to be three or four uh, dwelling units. Um, we're certain that 182 has three. And they have no parking. Uh, going further to um, slide number seven, if you see this image, this is 165 169, God, what have you, uh, west of our site, and it's in four family dwelling, uh, clearly not in the best uh, condition, perhaps not designed well at the very beginning. You've got front yard parking, you've got no covers for the door entries, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but again, a four dwelling unit element. Um, uh, on a larger piece of property. Slide number eight, um, again, uh, a very mixed land development pattern on the street. Uh, this shows several buildings uh, without parking, all of which are three stories um, tall and include at least two to three um, dwelling units. Uh, certainly for the middle unit, we know that's a free dwelling unit and we believe that the uh, unit on the corner is also a three dwelling unit property. So that's the exhibit that I hope that answers the question uh, that was asked about the commissioner, uh, not captured in um, this uh, exhibit is uh, units a little bit further down the street, uh, 112, 114 has uh, 20 dwelling units uh, and so does yeah, 112, 114. So again, Commissioner um, and, com and the board in total, uh, this area of the fourth floor of the development area has a mix of um, housing typologies. The land development pattern doesn't really appear to be consistent. Um, and again, our hope was to produce a housing typology that advances the goals and objectives of your redevelopment plan, both in terms of eliminating vacant and abandoned properties, but also uh, and take the creative design approach to development for quality residential housing. Um, with that, commissioners, I'll turn to the proofs. Um, <laughs> no. It's awful, right? I know I had a racist. They're going to say, what a racist I am. Hello. What is freaking Maggie. funny? Matt, Maggie. Your, hold on, your, hold on. Your microphone is on. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, sorry about that. So, uh, as this board knows, there are two contexts for the proofs for this type of permitted use. Um, it's the C1. Uh, the C1 is the traditional uh, hardship context. That is, that if the lot uh, upon which the proposed development is to take place is either uh, uniquely shaped, sized, um, uh, unusual topography, that is considered a quote unquote hardship and is uh, considered a proof positive for uh, the relief that is being sought. The C2 variance is called the flexible C, and that allows the board to consider uh, the benefits outweighing the detriments, and if on the whole, what's being proposed to you this evening is a better zoning alternative than a strict application of the code. In my professional opinion, um, both would be applicable uh, for this particular body. It's clearly a... Um, a uh, very narrow uh, lot with uh, very challenging development uh, obstacles. But overall, I would argue that the C2 is perhaps most applicable because of the context of the redevelopment plan, goals, and objectives, 
and then the recent court case, which encourages boards to look at the application in totality, and if you feel in totality that the application actually achieves the goals and purposes of zoning, the master plan, and your re redevelopment plan, then you can uh, comfortably grant the bulk and area deviations. So in the context of the C2, I'll proceed looking at each of the bulk and area deviations uh, as, as a group, in aggregate. In terms of the positive, the board knows that we have to show that the purposes of zoning would be advanced. In my professional opinion, several purposes of zoning under the municipal land use law would be advanced if you granted these reliefs. First is subsection J, which is to prevent urban sprawl and degradation under the environment through improper use of land. Um, this is an infill development project that the design team took a very close to, which allows the maximization of this vacant property in a uh, redevelopment area, which therefore advances the purposes of the redevelopment plan. It's compact, multifamily residential development, which also, uh, you'll hear me say this again at the end, advances smart growth uh, policies for comprehensive development. Subsection M to coordinate, um, I'm sorry, subsection I to promote a desirable visual environment through creative development techniques and good civic design. Often the focus of subsection I is on the aesthetic, and certainly Matt Evans spoke to the board about um, the design I towards a good aesthetic, including the landscape in the front, the addition of materials, uh, the use of fenestration to make um, the building more appealing, uh, and then of course the creative use of not only the balcony or terraces on the exterior, but the wall space on the in. What's often is forgotten, however, is the um, civic design. Uh, but fortunately, Matt Evans spoke about that in his testimony. Um, his creative approach to uh, taking this very challenging lot and making it work in a way that uh, meets all of the um, recommendations of your redevelopment plan in terms of design standards, uh, meeting the need for quality housing in the area, and of course, removing any indices of blight. So those are the uh, purposes of zoning that in my professional planning opinion would be advanced if you were to approve our application. Um, the MLUL, or Municipal Land Use Law, also states that if you, if an application were to advance a um, state policy, um, that could be considered a purpose of zoning or uh, what we'd argue in a D-variance, a special reason. And that was made clear in the court case Anfuso v. Sealy. Uh, and in this particular in application, I would submit against the board that the compact residential design is part and parcel of um, smart growth. Uh, the idea of limiting um, sprawl is also part of smart growth. And that means investing in urban areas where infrastructure exists and taking advantage of that infrastructure to meet the needs of residents of Patterson and the state as a whole. The balancing part of all of this, as the board knows, is the negative criteria. Uh, no substantial impairment to the zone plan, no substantial detriment to the public good. In my professional opinion, nothing that's being proposed this evening rises to the level of substantial, which comes directly from the statute itself. But I take it a step further and say that there'd be no detriment to the public good. In fact, it would be the opposite. Removing a vacant parcel and returning it, that site to tax rolls with uh, quality housing and um, creative approach to design, uh, you'd actually be uh, contributing to the health and sustainability of this important neighborhood in the fourth ward redevelopment area. In terms of impairment to the zone plan, I see absolutely none. In fact, that's why I began in my introductory comments with uh, a brief review of your redevelopment plan goals and objectives. In my professional opinion, if you were to grant this application, you would, in fact, be advancing, not impairing the zone plan uh, and zoning ordinance. So all in all, I would submit to the board that it, the application before you, the uh, benefits of granting the project in total would far outweigh any detriments. Again, uh, in my opinion, there are no detriments. I know that council advised that he may 
um, uh, speak with the applicant about some of the issues raised. Uh, and certainly, I would defer to them on that. But from a planning perspective, uh, it's my opinion that this particular application would advance your redevelopment plan and would also support and advance the purposes of that. Thank you very much for your testimony. We are, is of course, available, and we certainly concur that the planning testimony in this case we feel is very strong. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so let me open it up um, to the public. Any questions of Mr. Williams? Based on his testimony, please call in at 1-973-321-1579. The meeting ID number is 711-680-0071. I'll give two minutes for call-in and three minutes for questions. Thank you. Commissioners and staff, we have no calls at this time. Okay, thank you. So at this time, I'll open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have any questions? I believe, uh, Commissioner Uden, you had a question of Mr. Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, I want to thank uh, Mr. Williams. Actually, you only answered the question um, that I had question regarding comparative uh, uh, multifamily buildings around the area. And you have showed uh, many examples, which is uh, very satisfactory to me. And very unique design, I would say, and I love the jewelers enjoy getting there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, any other commissioners? Questions of Mr. Williams, please? I have, I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Brooks. Mr. Williams, <clears throat> I'm very familiar with this particular block because do you agree that they have done a lot of renovations and they have newer homes on this particular block, both across the street and down the block? Do you agree? I do. Okay. Do you also agree that this is a congested block as opposed to other area or other neighborhoods of Goblin Avenue? My concern is, and I'm never really that concerned about the parking, but here I'm concerned about the parking three family, it's a two family. I know that for a fact because I sell over there. But here's the other thing. The, the, the fa two families at parking next to your building on either side, which means that there's not even going to be spaces for people in that building to even park on that street. That's my, that's my other thing. I just want you to listen so you can answer all together. My other concern is that you said that this is for the public good, but this is this is a this is an area that has already been is already being redeveloped, and it's being it's, people are going in there and they're buying. It's not only um, landlords; your people is going in here and buying. I, you you're going to tell me that that's it's no harm to the public good. By putting a five family with no parking on a 24 by 98 lot, and that's not going to be a detriment to 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 to, to the uh, 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 public good. 
I just want to answer. Sir, I just want to show you're finished. You told me to wait. I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Commissioner, as always, you're asking, you know, very good, well thought out questions. I believe I understand the questions and your concerns, and I'm going to try to answer them as best I can. Um, you asked about whether there was new development in this area. I, I would certainly say yes, and I think um, uh, one of the images in the exhibit captured uh, an example of the, the new development. So, uh, excuse me, somebody's microphone is on again. Go ahead. Certainly. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you also mentioned that some of the development in the area has parking. Uh, the same image that shows the new development also shows that those uh, uh, dwelling units have on-site parking. So, so far, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, on the third, it was more of a comment than a question, I believe, uh, was that um, this section of Godwin in particular is dense. Uh, and I think I'll agree with you again, that is um, not something that is incongruous with your redevelopment plan for this area. It, it acknowledges that you've got um, compact lots in a tight configuration. Uh, certainly our site visit demonstrates that this is uh, a compact residential development area. Again, that comports with smart growth um, uh, policies and recommendations. So I don't disagree with you. I just see it perhaps a bit differently in the context of the redevelopment plan. I see that density as being a good thing. Um, in terms of the parking, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. Um, I know that we're not seeking relief for that. Um, Can I explain? Certainly. When you have the houses next door and the houses on the other side with cutaways, that means it removes that particular street parking for another property. So now you have three cutaways on either side of your building, which means that there's no street parking there. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I think I follow you now. What's, what's interesting is um, we do the exact opposite, right? So the cutaways you're referring to the driveway aprons, uh, they give access to the garages, and this eliminate parking on the street. Where in our proposal uh, by Matt Evans, we, we do the ex exact opposite, I guess, um, thereby not eliminating the parking spaces. Is that what you're? Is that what the direction you're going in? No, you, what what you're saying. I'm saying that the parking, the, the aprons, takes away from anybody else parking along that street. So it cuts out three parking spaces right there. Now, your proposal with no, with no parking, so you're going to have a space, because it's only 24 by 100, I mean 24 by 98, so the, the, the area in front of the property, even with no parking or no apron, you still could only park one car there, if that because of the way the other uh, properties are. So that's, that's, that's my concern. I don't know how you say that's not a debt. Right, so I, I, think, I think I understand you a bit better than I, I was trying to um, capture uh, a different way of looking at it. So your point was in the picture that I included in my exhibit, those dwelling units had uh, Broadway aprons for their garages which therefore eliminated on-street parking, whereas our proposal before you, I would argue, is even more appropriate for a dense, compact residential development area because we're not eliminating uh, on-street parking by introducing new curb cuts. By way of the example, and I'm always cautious about doing this because I understand every municipality is extremely unique and sometimes comparisons can backfire, but I'm going to go out on a limb and try it anyway. Uh, we have to be board planners in Hoboken, which is extremely dense, compact residential development, almost the entirety of that one point something square mile city. And in their um, redevelopment areas and some of their non redevelopment areas that are uh, for lot sizes like this, they don't allow on site parking 
for the very reason you just mentioned. They'd rather have um, uh, residents use the mass transportation like uh, residents here might be able to use the buses along um, uh, the perpendicular street, uh, and they don't want curb cuts that remove um, on-street parking uh, options. So I understand what you're saying, that there are curb cuts for the adjacent properties. I guess my point would be that we don't introduce curb cuts, which would remove additional parking spaces. Exactly. So you're not giving any, you're not, my, my point is, like I said, I never really worry about the parking too much. If you came, if this project was about a four family, I might even not really care about it. But you're talking a five family, and that's five different families coming in. And I ride down, I, I've sold in that block, and I know that the congestion is really terrible. The thing that concerns me is that because there is those aprons or those places that are taking the space of it, by, you can't justify it by saying, we're not going to do an apron. That, that doesn't justify them not having street parking. That doesn't justify that. And no, I, I didn't mean to imply that it did. I was simply following your logic, and I, I think I have um, something to offer. And your comment was, if I understood you correctly, that look at the adjacent properties with their aprons and how they have removed on-street parking um, opportunities. All I'm saying is we are not following that pattern of removing on-street parking opportunities. And I refer to the Hoboken uh, example where you have similar lot sizes and a preference um, in their redevelopment plans and ordinances for um, eliminating auto dependency in these compact residential development areas and focusing instead on mass transportation options. So I do. I, I just want to offer a different perspective. You said on one hand, look at those aprons, they took off street parking away, or on street parking away. I'm saying is it, it, five units be too much in terms of the impact on the on street parking. Um, I, I know that Alan's going to talk to the applicant about that. In my opinion, and we don't have a traffic engineer here today, but it would be a de minimis change between four, which I think you sound like you would be more comfortable with, and five dwellings. And again, as always, and, and I'll, I'll stop after this, I think, um, but I'll offer this only because of my experience working with this particular applicant. And that, and, and, and Andy Emerson Reed is here, he can, it can clarify if necessary. This applicant knows the, um, their market extremely well, and they know the Patterson uh, demographics equally well, such that they understand that the market capture they go after are um, people that understand there may not be parking available on site and actually prefer that because they don't use, they don't have INCs of uh, 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 vehicle ownership, they use um, um, shared parking alternatives, uh, shared parking, shared mobility alternatives and or mass transportation. And when that does not work, um, you've heard testimony from this very same applicant um, that in those instances, they clearly, they quickly identify offsite parking. But again, I know that it was offered today by the applicant. I'm only suggesting it because I've, I've dealt with this applicant on so many other applications. I just have a quick question also. Like, are you saying there's no aprons in front of this building? Correct. So there's no aprons in front of this building because, of course, you're not making a driveway or whatever. Okay, so there's no aprons there. I do think, though, you know, I think my own personal opinion also would be this would be so much better if it was a four four uh, unit than five, but that's my own personal opinion. Um all right, but Commissioner Brooks, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding it correctly. Do you have anything else of Mr. Williams? No, I understand it perfectly, and I I, I understand even the, the whole Vulcan comparison, but and then build on smaller units because of the density of the, of the town. So I really think that's a fair 
uh, comparison. However, I'll bow to you on that, except for I still have my opinion on this. I really do. And I'm finished. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Commissioner. Any other commissioners have any questions of Mr. Williams? No. no. Okay, I hear none. Okay, Mr. Maraconda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, that would conclude our direct testimony. Subject to, we'd like to have two minutes off record. We feel very comfortable with the presentation that we put forth. However, I'd like two minutes off the record if I could. Okay, two minutes, you have it. Thank you. Chairwoman Northrop and Commissioners, we have no callers at this time. Okay. Um, I don't know if you heard, we have, we're in a two-minute hold pattern right now. We're waiting for Mr. Maraconda. Yes, I, I heard you, okay. man, but I just want to make sure okay. that you know that there are no callers coming in. Madam Chair, thank you. We are back on. Yes. Yeah, we appreciate that extra time. We, we just wanted to confer among ourselves with our experts to determine if there was any other uh, testimony we wanted to supplement this application with in terms of going back to Mr. Evans or the applicant. But uh, we do feel very comfortable moving forward at this point in concluding our testimony. So you wish I'll give a brief summation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, again, I think the testimony in this case speaks for itself. Um, substantial architectural planning and, and applicant testimony that provides, I think, a very strong framework for the board to give us the opportunity to redevelop a site that probably will sit vacant, unfortunately, for many years unless this particular developer with the ability and capacity and determination to develop this site is given that opportunity. Uh, these, these units are unique, which our city development plan really encourages, you know, creative thinking, which is what this is. Uh, it does provide clear quality housing with sufficient square footage. We think the loft units are going to be very attractive. I got to commend the Germans on that. And uh, we do think they will be an appealing element of uh, renting these units. And JCM has the proven track record to do just that. Uh, we feel very good about this application. We would ask the board to consider a motion for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. 
Okay, that being said, I'm going to ask if uh, there's anyone, any commissioner would like to make a motion on this application? This is Commissioner Santana, would like to make a motion for approval? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, hold on one second. Mr. Uh, Aquaviva, we have no stipulations on this? Nothing, right? I did not hear any any proposed conditions, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Santana. All right, um, on the application of JCM Investor 1012 LLC, 449 and 18th Street, Tyson, New Jersey. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Is that Commissioner Uden? Fisher. Fisher, Commissioner Fisher. Second by Commissioner Fisher. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioners, Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? No. Commissioner Cleves? Commissioner Cleves? Commissioner Santana? Yes. Commissioner Eugene? Yes. Is that a yes, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cleves? I'm sorry, I'm here. It, 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 wouldn't go, it wouldn't go up on mute for me. I'm here. What is your vote, yes or no? Uh, I'm a little torn. Um, I am going to vote no. Thank you. Chairwoman Northam. Yes. Or yes to no. Thank you. Okay. We thank you very much for your approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, our next applicant. Okay. Chairwoman Winter, can I have a few moments so that some of the uh, commissioners can use the restrooms, please? Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll give five minutes and then back to the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean, Matt? Make sure you mute mu everybody mute their, their microphones. I am doing that now, okay. sure, woman. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Hey, man. How do I take this exhibit down? Or will you just replace it when you... Madam Secretary, are you there? I am present, commissioners and staff. Okay, is everyone else there? Can we resume? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Um, do you want to take down the... Um... Okay, Matt. Can you hear me? Okay, can you un can I'm you gonna mute him. Give me one second. Thank you. There he is. Thank you. Okay, Matt. Um Mr. Williams is having a problem taking down, okay, the schematic here. Can you can you possibly help him? Mr. Williams? Yeah, so right here I am. Okay, so he can't get this down himself. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so I'm going to put mine up there, okay? Do you need my IT technician? Excuse me, do you need my IT technician? Mr. Evans? I'm good. He's good. He's good, thank you. Okay. Yes, we do, thank you. Okay. Okay, so the second application this evening is JCM Investors 1012 LLC, 449 East 18th Street in Patterson. The property is located at 73-75 B Street, Block 6304, Lot 6 and 7. Okay. Um, the parcels are vacant and the applicant proposes to construct a new three-story residential building with 11 units on the first floor through third floor. The first floor is to contain six parking spaces and a 500 square foot residential studio apartment. The second and third floors each propose five one-bedroom units per floor. The parcel has area of 5,000 square feet. This proposal is within the RA-2 zone of the Fifth Ward Redevelopment Plan. The variances are requested for the following. Backward setback as a minimum of three feet, three feet is required and zero feet is proposed. One side yard setback as a minimum of five feet is because three feet is proposed. And somebody's got your mic on. Somebody's got your mic on, please. Okay. Um, one side yard setback as a minimum of five feet is required and three feet is, is provided. Rear yard setback as a minimum of 20 feet is required and eight feet is proposed. Lot building coverage as a building coverage of 60% is permitted and a building coverage of 76% is proposed. Lot impervious coverage as an impervious coverage of 80% is permitted and impervious coverage of 85% is proposed. Open space in the many areas of 1,650 square feet is required and open space and amenity areas of 480 square feet is proposed. Off street parking of 11 parking spaces is required and off street parking of 6 parking spaces is proposed. And it requires site plan approval and bulk variances. Mr. Maraconda, you're representing the applicant, applicant on this, correct? Yes, my office represents the applicant now, Maraconda. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Joyce, will you give us your review, please? Yes. <laughs> Property taxes and sewer charges are current. For persons having a 10% or greater ownership interest in JCM Investors 1012 LLC is Matthew Florio, providing an address of 449 East 18th Street, Paris, New Jersey. As indicated in the property survey prepared by David von Steenberg and dated September 25, 2019, the parcels have combined frontage of 50 feet on Beach Street, a rear lot line that also measures 50 feet, and northern and southern lot lines that measure 100 feet each. The parcels area of 5,000 square feet or 0.12 acres. The lots are vacant of structures. The survey also indicates that there are existing two-story frame dwellings adjacent to both the north and south of the property in question. Beach Street is a one-way street in a northerly direction. Evans Architects has prepared a three-page architectural submittal last dated March 6, 2020. 
Tax map indicates that the parcels are located on the eastern side of each, each street between Oak Street and Essex Street. Details for the recharge pit lighting and the zoning table are also indicated. <clears throat> the proposed site plan indicates the outline of the proposed three-story building. The building is to cover 76% of the lot and has an approximate dim dimension of 92 feet in length and 42 feet in width. The building is proposed to be on the front property line, eight feet from the rear property line, five feet from the northern side property line, and three feet from the southern side property line. A note on the plan indicates that the entire site and site perimeter is to be equipped with video security throughout public areas and site lighting along the traveled public way and parking area. Surveillance cameras are to connect to the City of Patterson Police Department system. Drawing S2 is the site plan with soil erosion details and notes. A permit is required from the Hudson Essex to say Soil Conservation Service prior to final approval. Drawing SK-1 indicates the building elevations of floor plans. The first floor plan indicates a sprinkler room, a refuse and recycling room, a bike storage area, a lobby, a package area, and parking for six vehicles, including one handicapped space and two stairwells. There is a doorway access point into the building through a recess, recess access door located on Beach Street. The recess door leads to the lobby, which provides access to the package area, stairwell number one, and a handicapped accessible studio unit of 500 square feet. There's also an interior door that leads to the parking garage. The overhead garage door located on Beach Street leads to the six-space parking garage, which includes one handicapped parking space. There's a door located at the rear of the building. This door leads to the second enclosed stairwell and into the parking garage. <clears throat> the floor plan for the second and third floor plans are identical in layout. Each floor has five one-bedroom units, which include a full bathroom, a washer and dryer, a kitchen and a living room area, and a mechanical closet. The first floor studio unit contains 500 square feet. One-bedroom units contain 604 square feet, 616 square feet, 624 square feet, 630 square feet, and 660 square feet. The front elevation view from Beach Street indicates the garage entry door and the pedestrian access door into the lobby area. The building indicates a brick veneer and stucco facade, single and triple hung windows on each floor, and a rooftop molding. The rear elevation has a view of the has a view of the building indicates a stucco finish on all three floors. There's one set of double hung windows on the second and third floor. A stucco finish on the second and third floors and seven sets of windows on each floor. The right side elevation indicates a brick finish on the first floor, a stucco finish on the second and third floors and six sets of windows on each floor. The mechanical units are located on the building's roof. This is a flat roof building. The building indicates a top height of 31 feet. The intent of the RA-2 residential district of the fifth ward redevelopment plan is to permit a more intensive residential use of land with various types of dwellings. The surrounding existing dwellings are predominantly older, multifamily dwellings of two stories in height. The applicant requests variances for the following conditions for this proposed 11-unit structure. Front yard setback is a minimum of three feet is required and zero feet is proposed. One side yard setback is a minimum of five feet is required and three feet is provided. Three yard setback is a minimum of 20 feet is required and eight feet is proposed. Lot building coverage is a building coverage of 6% is permitted and a building coverage of 76% is proposed. Lot impervious coverage as, a, as an impervious coverage of 80% is permitted and impervious coverage of 85% is proposed. Open space and amenity areas of 1,650 square feet is required, and open space and amenity areas of 480 square feet is proposed. All street parking of 11 parking spaces is required, and all street parking of 6 parking spaces is proposed. 
As this is a redevelopment area, the planning board must determine whether the granting of the requested variance is to allow the number of dwelling units proposed by the applicant is appropriate for the lot and the immediate surrounding area. Residential apartment construction is permitted within the redevelopment area. A mixture of different types of residential units is encouraged. The planning board should determine whether the land area of this parcel is suitable for the number and type of apartment units proposed or whether additional off-street parking needs to be obtained. It shall be the responsibility of the applicant and or the preparer of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating the plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. Surrounding land uses. This proposal is in the Sandy Hill section of the city within the 5th Ward redevelopment plan. The area is zoned residential with commercial areas located at some corner intersections. On December 9th, 2019, the planning board heard and approved a proposal at 107-109 Beach Street to remove the existing two-story frame dwelling on the parcel and construct a new five-story residential building with a total of 20 units. Including remarks, the applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at approximately $500,000. The applicant should incorporate the design elements contained within the 5th Ward redevelopment plan on the site and within the building. At a planning board meeting held on April 15, 2020, the board heard and approved an application on 135 Beach Street. The applicant proposed to remove both the existing two-story, four-unit residential structure and separate garage structure and construct a new five-story Residential building with 20 units on the second through fifth floors. The first floor contains eight parking spaces. That is your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Mr. George. Mr. Maraconda? Commissioners, for your hands this evening, uh, we'll be presenting uh, two expert witnesses as well as the applicant, uh, similar to our previous application. Uh, this is a very straightforward application within the redevelopment zone of the fifth ward redevelopment area. Um, with respect to this application, this is an area, as Mr. Deutsch alluded to, that this applicant has been successful in other projects very recently. Uh, this area of the fifth ward redevelopment zone uh, also has a substantial need for new housing in this type of area. Uh, so we're going to present Mr. Evans as our first witness. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Evans? Mr. Evans, please raise your right hand. Do you swear our front testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and not the about the truth? Yes, I do. Say your full name for the record. Matthew Evans, architect. Um, uh, be testifying tonight as an architect. Uh, 472 going out, Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> Should we stipulate to Mr. Evans' credentials, Madam Chair? Yes, I'm yes. sorry, yes. Thank you very much. I sent them as an expert witness. Thank you very much. Prepared this um, this site plan was prepared by your office, is that correct? Yes. And you had an opportunity to, to uh, hear Mr. Glitch's report? Yes. Uh, would you give us an overview of the site and what the applicant proposes? Okay, so we have um, the site, uh, which is 7375 Beach Street. And what we have is a three-story structure, which we're proposing on the property. The property is 5,000 square feet. It's 50 by 100. And as you can see from the site plan, we have adjacent building to the left and an adjacent building to the right. Both of those buildings, um, existing structures, have windows on the sides. So we have updated created this design to take into consideration the adjacent properties and we have um, open space to the left and right of the building. By creating that, we've also um, have a plan. Uh, the plan was similar to other ones we were submitted and were approved by the planning board uh, um, on Beach Street uh, and I believe in the neighborhood in the fifth ward. We have um, the plan which we're proposing here. I'll go to the uh, the floor the um, the um, or the, to the elevation. So the front elevation we have a garage 
a main entrance to the apartments. We have a mix of materials, uh, stucco, brick, and, um, and um, casement type windows. And, and then we have the first floor plan, as Mr. Deutsch uh, mentioned, uh, what we're proposing. We have six parking spaces. And then we have a main entrance to the building. We have the lobby package. And then we have a handicapped studio apartment to the rear uh, of that. And it has its own laundry facilities. Um, and that's 500 square feet, which is more than enough for the um, handicapped and also the studio unit. We have bike storage in the rear of the parking. We have garage lighting throughout. And then you can see there's that rear stair, uh, which this unit would require um, a second means of egress, a second fire stair, uh, based on the configuration of these units. There's more than four units per floor that creates um, uh, the need for a second means of egress. We have uh, all one bedrooms on the second and third floor, and they all have their own laundry facilities and they all meet the requirement for the uh, one bedroom minimum square footage. And um, that's basically, in a nutshell, is the, uh, what we're proposing. And all the exterior design conforms to the redevelopment requirements for aesthetic appearance? Yes, we want a nice streetscape um, entry with mixing materials, aesthetic. We break up the facade so it's not a big box. Uh, we give it an awning and we um, inset the entry uh, and we have a crown molding on uh, the um, different elements of the building. Did you cover, you may have, where the parking is accessed from? The parking is accessed off the driveway on Beach Street and there's six parking spaces underneath. Okay. And uh, all units conform to square footage requirements, all the one bedrooms, is that right? Yeah, the studio and one bedroom. Right. So this building is designed for a certain demographic that would, would look for units that are with less intense number of residents, is that correct? Yes, it's lower intensity. Right. All right, uh, that's all I have, Mr. Evans, at this time. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to open it up to the public for questions for Mr. Evans. If anyone in the public has any questions of Mr. Evans based on his testimony, please call in at 973-321-1579. Turn off your mic, please. Um, call in 973-321-1579, and the meeting ID number is 711-680-0071. I'll give it uh, two minutes for call-ins, three minutes for questions. Thank you. Commissioners, we have no callers at this time. Okay, at this moment I'll open it up to our commissioners. Commissioners, uh, any questions of Mr. Evans? Is this going to come again, Madam Chair, if you permit me to ask a question? Yes, Commissioner Uden. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Udin, yes. <clears throat> you're not, you're, you're my Commissioner Udin? Yeah, Commissioner Udin. Ask your question. I hear, I hear feedback. If somebody no, has can I take care of that? Give me one second, Chairwoman. Okay. Can I go Please to go? Commissioner Uden, yes. Yes. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, Michelle, you can switch it, please, and show the uh, garage picture one more time, please. That's right here. Um, yeah, we should just go down a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's perfect, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So, if, I, if I'm not wrong, uh, Michelle Evans, you said one of the six parking spaces would be uh, uh, for handicap. One of them, right? Yes. So, which one do you think would be for, for handicap? The first one, because which one you decided to be, uh, you know, 
Right here we have the handicapped spot, um, which is thanks to the uh, studio parking lot. Okay, so this is one for the one of the parking space for handicap, and on the left side on the picture, I can say three of them. Am I correct? One, two, three. That's that parking. And where are the two? The other two, there's, there's right next to you, see the handicap symbol right behind that. There's yes, one, and then there's another one next to the stairwell. So there's three on the right and three on the left. Got it, got it. Yeah, just, because I want, this is, this is just a concern that uh, the parking, the handicap parking space, which one uh, you think is best and easy for the person to, you know, get the, you know, park the car or get up from the garage. Right. You know, this is just, just a comment. It's not a question. I said, pick one of the space, which one would be easier for the individual who's going to use the spot. Uh, other than that, uh, th thank you for the answer. Okay, so. Okay. Three. Is that all? Mr. Odin? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, okay. This is a question, but I, I again, uh, the picture is not. Uh, I thought all the six uh, parking spaces actually on the left side, so right. three and three. But I, I, you know, from the picture, I cannot say exactly which one would yeah. be more easier space for the handicapped person. Right. Right. So I, my recommendation would be if it is uh, somewhere where the person can be easily access the space. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah, your question was answered. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. You're welcome. All okay. right. Commissioners, commissioners, any questions? I have a question. Yes, Commissioner, what, Commissioner Brooks? Um, Mr. Evans, the height of the building, is that in, in line with the building that's uh, on either side of it? I know it's 31, which means that it, it just meeting, uh, it's meeting the proposal level, but is it, is it, is it higher than the two buildings on either side? It's in context with that. Uh, maybe um, Mr. Williams would be able to uh, elaborate a little bit more on it. But um, it's a three-story building. It's consistent with um, the the um, the neighboring properties. This being different is that you enter at grade level. So it's some of the other houses. You know, you have about a uh, few steps going up to the. Um, I'm trying to get to that spot here on the site plan. Um. Somebody's got somebody's got their mic on, please. Everyone, if you're not speaking, turn your mics off. Commissioners, I am trying to figure it out. At this moment, I do not know who it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, that's why I just figured. Let me open my mouth and say something. Thank you. So if you have our property is a grade level entry, and you know some of these other uh, structures have steps. Uh, and different things coming in, but um, it would not be out of place. Uh, what we tried to do is a three-story building, and um, I think in the, the scale and density meets the. Uh, our, our building height, uh, Commissioner, is only 31 feet as compared to 45 uh, permitted. But Mr. Williams will elaborate on the comparison of the proposed structure in terms of the surrounding streetscape. Yeah, uh, Matt, the front, the, the, the front yard setback, when I went down that street, all those houses are like, is, is this building going to be set back from those other houses? No, they're right. If you look at this site plan, would that, like the, as I mentioned, the, the buildings on the left and the buildings to the right, they're both right on the front property line. Right, they're right. They're both right on the our property line, too. So that's why we set our building back to give them light and air and access to their uh, windows and, and, and uh, egress elements. So um, it would be consistent with the, with the um, setbacks and adjacent properties. Okay, so... So you're asking for variance um, because you you don't want to you, you you don't want to go back. Why are you asking? Why are you just showing zero feet? I don't understand. I mean, if it's <clears throat> if the rest of the houses are, are at the, the level of the um, sidewalk, so I understand that that's right at the 
So you're doing it to just keep in line with what the, what the other houses are, are in that block? Is that what it is? No. Yeah, I think George, uh, Mr. Williams will be able to elaborate a little bit on that factor too. That's more, um, it, it, it uh, aligns more with the planning. But I see an apron here in front of the, um, where, the where the gate is, the where, where the um, where, where the parking lot is going to go is coming in from the beach side. Yeah, the park, it's, a, it's a garage parking. We're in, we're under, you know, it's going to enter in. So everything's going to be along the street property line. And then we'll have our garage to the left and our main entry to the right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Anyone else have questions for Mr. Evans? Commissioners? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Maraconda? Yes, we'll call Mr. Andy Reid, uh, our next witness. Okay. Mr. Reid? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear up our testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, yes, I do. do. Say your full name for the record. Andy Reid, RWID. And your position for with JCM? Unless you're fully familiar with this site plan application and rendering before the board this evening? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, you've heard Mr. Evans' testimony in Mr. Deutsch's report tonight. Uh, this building design that's in Mr. Deutsch's report already alluded to some of the projects that JCM has taken on along Beach Street. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and is, you're satisfied that this one, and from your building and building perspective, or for future de future development, is in keeping with uh, your your plans for multifamily housing in this area? Yes. Yeah. And uh, you're satisfied based upon your experience in property management that uh, this site can handle uh, this number of smaller units, and with the number of parking spaces, given the fact that these are one bedroom units. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so your experience is this will be adequate in parking. Yes. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Reed, at this time. Uh, one more question. I'm sorry, Mr. Reed. The standard security and writing of provisions that JCM utilizes will be in effect here? Okay. The standard security and lighting uh, provisions that JCM makes in their development zones will be in effect on this project? Yes. And that's all I have, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. At this moment, I'm going to open it up to the public. If anyone has any questions, okay, Mr. Reed, based on his testimony, please call in at 973-321-1579, meeting ID number 711-680-0071. Okay, I'll give two minutes for call-in, three minutes for questions. Commissioner Nordrup and Commissioners, we have no quotas at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, Commissioners, any questions of Mr. Reed? I have a question. Yes, yeah, Commissioner Brown. Mr. Reed, where is the, I, maybe I missed it with, with, with Matt, but where is the 480 square feet? Where is that going to be at for the open space? Would you prefer to have Mr. Evans answer that, uh, Andy? Mr. Reed? He's muted. 
Okay. Yes. 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 Andy, there's a question about where the open space would be, amenity space. So I'm going to have Mr. Evans talk about that, if that's okay, uh, Mr. Brooks. Sorry, I don't care. I thought maybe I missed it. Okay. Mr. Evans, you're up on that. We have the rear, uh, basically, we have the rear yard, uh, which we're showing right now, open yard in the back. Um, and then we also show the security cameras, uh, et cetera. So that would be a small yard for the tenants to occupy alongside the back. Basically, passive recreational space to enjoy open air. Yes. So, so the open air is in the back, in, in the rear yard that you're asking for the uh, variance for? So you, it, you, you need a 20, but you have eight? That's where the open space is going to be. That's the difference in between that 1650 and 480? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other commissioners? Any questions of Mr. Reed? This is Commissioner Cleese. Just to piggyback off of um, Commissioner Brooks, so how will they get to the open space? Will they have to come out the front and go around the back of the building? Yes. Or through the garage, we have the door um, out the back. Or they can take the rear stair to the backyard. So if they want, let's say you're in the in the apartment, you can go down the hall, take the back stair, and go down and enter the backyard through the stair. So there's a couple different ways to access that rear yard. For the okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, of Mr. Reed? Okay, seeing none. Mr. Maraconda? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. We'll call Mr. George Williams. Thank you. Mr. Chair, what do you please raise your right hand? Do you swear a firm testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I most certainly do. Say your full name for the record. Good evening again, Commissioners. My name is George Weedle Williams, representing the Planning Consultancy Nishwing Group. Headquartered in Montclair, New Jersey, at 105 Grove Street, now suite number three and four. Uh, we recognize Mr. Williams as an expert witness. Thank you. That's, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, you had an opportunity to uh, review and analyze Mr. Evans' site plan as well as Mr. Deutsch's review in connection with tonight's meeting? I did. And obviously, you've done your on site work in terms of your planning analysis. Uh, as such, could you give us uh, your overview of the site and the proposal? Certainly. Uh, again, good evening, Commissioners. Um, uh, happy to be here this evening representing a, uh, another infill residential development in your Patterson Street development area. In this case, as you heard, it's the fifth ward redevelopment area as opposed to the prior application, which was the fourth ward redevelopment area. Uh, be that as, as it may, uh, as you heard from uh, your board planner, Mr. Deutsch, uh, the intent and purpose of the redevelopment planning process is the same, and what in fact uh, the intent of this district is very similar. For the record, uh, this is um, property commonly known as um, 7375 Beach Street, block number 6304, lots number 6 and 7, uh, in your municipal tax records, located in the 5th Ward redevelopment area, are in two district and the intent of the RA2 district, just to give a bit of context, is uh, to permit a more intense residential use of land with various types of dwellings, density is maintained in a medium range while building height is kept low enough to be generally compatible with the one and two family residential development uh, from page 35 of your redevelopment plan. Uh, you've already heard a fair amount from Matt Evans, our architect for this project, uh, just highlighting some of the amenities, the storage, uh, on-site storage, on-site parking, and uh, a particular note from my perspective as a planner, the bike storage as well. Um, there are a number of reliefs sought. Mr. Deutsch captured them in his report. Uh, Council for applicant, Mr. Maranconda, uh, uh, repeated them. Um, they include minimum front yard, as uh, Commissioner Brooks just uh, queried, minimum rear yard setback, uh, minimum side yard setback on one side, maximum lot coverage, maximum surface lot coverage, uh, minimum parking spaces where 11 are required, six are from last but not least, uh, the open space amenity. Uh, of the um, overall context,
my first application, just as I began with the prior application, let me just say uh, very quickly, the uh, proposal before you comports with the tenets of your uh, fifth ward redevelopment plan, specifically uh, page 27 of your uh, redevelopment plan, the fifth the intent and goal purpose of the plan is to revitalize the fifth ward of the city, uh, to reduce the blighting impacts of abandoned and vacant properties, and provide quality new housing options for area residents. Again, uh, similar planning approach using redevelopment law to address some of the urban decline in some of Patterson's neighborhoods. The um, overarching goals of both plans are very similar. Uh, but for the record, I just want to share that with you and give you some context for uh, the release work that are being sought uh, this evening. Similar to the last application, I would again like to uh, uh, mark something as an exhibit into the record. Um, I believe this would be A A one. That would be correct. We would ask uh, the, the court reporter to indicate okay. that on her records, and uh, that would be our only exhibit, I believe, Mr. Williams. That is correct. Yes. Okay. So noted. Thank you, Madam Court Reporter. Um, <laughs> this is uh, very similar. It's again a storybook uh, uh, exhibit. A compilation of graphics, some taken directly from your land use documents, others are photographs that I and or my uh, team took while conducting our site surveys. And so I'll go through these relatively quickly. The first slide, um, typical approach from our firm's um, exhibit development, just an aerial photograph depicting the site in question with the bold yellow boundaries. Uh, again, showing the lot configurations on this tax block. Most of them are relatively narrow, uh, with the exception of the corner properties, which tend to be a bit larger. And again, as you've heard from our project architect, Mr. Edmonds, we are combining two lots uh, for this application. Of note also is our proximity to the Roberto Clemente Park, which is uh, less than a block away. Slide number three is just an excerpt from your uh, redevelopment plan zoning map. Again, uh, showing this property uh, in the RA2 district of the redevelopment area. Uh, getting to the photographs, the first photograph on slide number five, four, indicated as photo number one is a frontal view of the project site on a beautiful sunny day. You can see that it is currently not developed and is flanked by the um, residential development on either side. Currently, it is fenced and gated. Uh, slide number five, photo number two, uh, image of 71 Beach Street. Um, there are uh, a number, like the prior application in the fourth ward redevelopment area, in the fifth ward redevelopment area on this street in particular, uh, there um, is a mix of housing typologies and the land development pattern, as you'll see as we go through this, uh, varies a bit. Um, this particular picture captures uh, adjacent property uh, that appears to be two family, and as you go down the street, there's a mix of two, three, and four families. Uh, slide number six, photo number three, 80 Beach Street, um, depicts a three story multi family uh, development. Uh, this one does not offer on-site parking, uh, unlike the proposal before you this evening. And then I think wrapping up, uh, there may be one more after this. Slide number seven is a photo of the Passaic County building uh, further down the road. Um, and you can just see the difference in land development pattern going from uh, low to medium density residential to uh, non-residential. And you see a smokestack in the background. Um, so that's it, just to give you a sense of the land. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the last slide, slide number eight, uh, to further round out the mix of land uses in the area. Um, and this is where the smokestack was. Photo number five is of 25, 27, excuse me, 27 57 Madison Street, um, uh, which is in the adjacent zone district for active reuse. And that's been a, a conversion project, which is uh, somewhat typical in 
Patterson as the industrial sector began to decline, and Patterson sought to um, use those gorgeous industrial buildings for other uses. So, um, with that, I'll turn to um, the proofs. As mentioned by, I believe, Mr. Deutsch, if not Mr. Reed, there are a couple of other uh, developments in this area um, that were approved by this board for this applicant to give a sense of how this applicant, JCM Investors, approaches um, answering the call of the redevelopment plan for Patterson, and they include 107-109 uh, Beach as well as 135 Beach Street. Um, in terms of proofs, again, very similar to the prior application, uh, I will submit to this board that in this particular instance, the C2 flexible C uh, is the appropriate context. Again, it allows the board to consider whether the benefits outweigh the detriments uh, of approving the reliefs that we're seeking and or if you find that overall what's being proposed is a better zoning alternative than a strict application of your code. Parenthetically, uh, the redevelopment plan uh, for Fifth Ward seeks to encourage development. Um, it acknowledges that the uh, current land of development patterns um, lack continuity and that the housing stock is eclectic, and therefore a redevelopment plan encourages some flexibility in the board's approach to um, reviewing applications and a developer's approach to uh, meeting the needs of the redevelopment uh, area. So, um, as you know, for C2, uh, we have to show that the um, uh, rationale for approving the barriers are rooted in the purposes of zoning as outlined in the municipal land use law. Uh, you're going to hear a repetition of what I uh, shared with you for a previous application uh, because it's the same context, a redevelopment area in a, in a section of Patterson. The first is subsection J to prevent uh, urban sprawl and degradation of the environment through improper use of land. Again, um, my firm uh, found that this is extremely appropriate in the context of the fifth ward redevelopment area of Patterson. Uh, the whole intent is to um, incentivize and target uh, infill development to urban areas where infrastructure always already exists, as opposed to encouraging sprawl throughout the city, the county, and the state. And so if you were to approve this application, certainly you would be advancing that section or purpose of zoning. Um, subsection on the road, a desirable visual environment. Uh, I know this is a, a oft used um, purpose of zoning, but I find it particularly appropriate for uh, infill development, urban infill development and redevelopment areas, because the challenge is really uh, set for the applicant to demonstrate that they can take an area that has been deemed in need of redevelopment or quote unquote blighted and find a way to um, design <coughs> housing that um, uh, improves the neighborhood character and provides quality housing. So that's been achieved in my, my opinion by Matt Evans and his design approach to this particular development, uh, both um, his use of materials his approach to um, providing parking on site, his use of um, amenities that would incentivize um, residents to move into these uh, locations um, for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, the, the um, bike storage, the other storage, the parking on site, et cetera. Um, and like the prior application, I would argue that um, the um, advancement of the state policy for smart growth would also be uh, advanced if you were to approve this application. Again, the smart growth policy in New Jersey encourages infill development, um, creative urban design, and most importantly, compact residential development so that you are not um, encouraging scroll, but rather taking advantage of um, uh, existing infrastructure. The that is a statement in the last one, as it is for all C2 contexts. Uh, uh, in my professional opinion, based on my review of your redevelopment plan, your master plan, uh, the um, site plans prepared by Matt Evans, uh, there is no substantial detriment to the public good. 
That is, we're taking a vacant, in fact, I would argue there's only a benefit to um, this section of the city's redevelopment area because we are removing a vacant uh, parcel, which is specifically recommended in your redevelopment plan, and we are replacing it with quality housing, which is also a very specific recommendation of your redevelopment plan. It adds to that the aesthetic um, uh, value achieved through Matt Evans' design approach. In my opinion, again, there would certainly be no substantial detriment to the public good, and I would argue, in fact, there would be only benefits to the public good. Um, certainly no impairment to the master plan, definitely no substantial impairment to the master plan, uh, and I'll speak to that again when I get to the parking. Uh, but the reason I have started to begin my testimony with references to the master plan and the redevelopment plan goals and objectives is it sets the stage for uh, demonstrating that what's being presented to the board comports directly with uh, both the master plan and the redevelopment plan. So in this case, there's absolutely no impairment, uh, only advancement of your uh, master plan goals and objectives. Under the polling case, uh, we're allowed to um, present to the board each of the bulk and area variances as a whole, uh, as opposed to discrete uh, bulk and area variances, although I believe Matt Evans offered testimony in support of each of those deviations. But the pulling case allows the board to consider that if taken as a whole, the entire application warrants relief from some of the bulk and area regulations uh, for this district. And again, your fifth ward redevelopment plan does encourage some flexibility when reviewing applications like this because the intent is to uh, incentivize development, redress indices of blight, um, and remove vacant properties, abandoned properties, etc. Parking, however, is almost a standalone um, uh, variance. And so let me address that quickly for you. Um, you heard the uh, standards uh, that are required for the parking. Uh, we have a deviation from that standard. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, stop saying that. No. 11 spaces are required, six are proposed. What's interesting is your master plan contemplates that uh, Patterson as a whole may need to look at its parking standards with some flexibility or liberality. And in the redevelopment areas in particular, Patterson Land Use Boards should look at the parking standards with greater liberality. In the master plan, uh, uh, section 6, page 45, it says in part, and I quote, while insufficient off-street parking can be problematic, Excessive off-street parking has its own negative consequences as well. Providing off-street parking can be expensive and even cost prohibitive for a developer, and it also uses space that could potentially be put to another productive use. Parking spaces that are needed for specific use times, such as, and I'm sorry, that goes into shared parking for uh, the mixed use. So the master plan understands that in a densely uh, developed urban area like Patterson, that parking standards have to have a bit of fluidity uh, during the development phase and the review phase. Typically, boards are not asked to consider um, the, in, the financial hardship on a developer, but what this makes clear in a master plan, particularly for redevelopment areas where there are indices of blight and abandonment, the effort is to redress those indices by giving incentives for the such as release like parking. Particularly in instances in the redevelopment area where there are uh, demographic analyses and or empirical data such that JCM has that suggests that the strict application of your parking code is not necessary because the target market is not going to have as many uh, vehicles due to um, vehicle ownership statistics in the area. So for all those reasons, it's my opinion that the board could comfortably grant, as it has done for other developments from GCM in the immediate vicinity, the parking variance because of your master plan recommendation 
JCM experience in development in this area specific to actual parking demand versus um, the standards in the code. Finally, there is a court case, it's the Valenti v. Obsequian court case, that suggests when the actual parking demand is less than that of what the code requires, and I'll emphasize this is particularly um, uh, relevant in the context of a redevelopment area, the board can comfortably grant the relief to provide fewer on-site parking spaces, and I think that's the case for the application before the board this evening. So um, for both the bulk and area deviations and the parking deviation, uh, in my professional planning opinion, there are adequate proofs in support of both under the C2 context. Mr. Williams, I'll conclude your testimony, correct? Yes, Council, thank you. Thank you very much. We're available for any questions, Madam Chair. Okay, I'm going to open this up to the public. Any questions of Mr. Williams? Based on his testimony, please call in at 973-321-1579. The ID number is 711-680-0071. I'll allow two minutes for call-ins, three minutes for questions. Thank you. Madam Chairman? Yes. Is it appropriate to add one sentence at this point, or should I wait until after? Wait until after, please. Will do. Chairwoman, we have no callers at this time, but you can give it another 30 seconds if you wish. Okay, if there's no callers, then I will ask Mr. Williams, you want to add one more sentence? It's okay. Chair, uh, I, I believe it was Commissioner Brooks that asked. Um, now I'm going to open it. I'm going to open it up to questions anyway, uh, right after the public. Do you want to save it for then? Okay, thank you. Madam Secretary, any callers? <laughs> Chairwoman, we have no callers and commissioners at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So then, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, make your statement so that I'm going to open it up to the commissioners and then they'll have the full uh, view of what you're saying here. Certainly. Sure. Thank you, Chair Chairwoman. And very quickly, Commissioner Brooks asked a question of Matt Evans so about the setback. Uh, and, and that I thought answered, but also suggested that I uh, opine as well. And the redevelopment plan does suggest trying to keep um, some elements of the land of the consistent. One of those in this case would be the, uh, the, the, the step back. Okay. All right. So at this time, I'll open it up to the commissioners. Any commissioners have any questions of Mr. Williams? Commissioners, any, any questions? Yes. Okay, I'm hearing somebody, but I don't hear it's muffled. Okay, I'm assuming we don't have any questions from the commissioners. All right, so Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor of Conca? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Now conclude our I would submit to the board that based upon this, the applicant's testimony, as well as our two professional uh, witnesses this evening, that the applicant has established substantial basis and reason for the granting of the variances and site plan approval. This, as Mr. Deutsch outlines in his report and our testimony further elaborates on, this is a site that's very much in need of redevelopment. Somebody's mic is open, sorry. Somebody's mic is open. Please close it. Okay, thank you. Continue. A site that's very much in need of redevelopment and is ideally suited for this type of development with limited number of bedrooms per unit. Uh, an accommodation for a handicapped space with one studio, and frankly, the parking on site should more than meet the needs of the site uh, based on our applicant and professional testimony. Uh, again, JCM has established here another opportunity to be somewhat creative in terms of meeting the needs of different demographics with the, with the limited number of bedrooms per unit. 
So I think it's very important to see that we're reaching into the fifth ward with that same concept at this time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, is there, is there, and would any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? Commissioners? Commissioner Dean. Yes, Commissioner Dean, please go ahead. All right, so on the application of ACM Investor 1012 LLC 449 East 18th Street, Patterson, New Jersey 07524. At the property address 23 75, Street Block 6304, Lot 6 and 7. I move that, that the Board of Attorney Paper Resolution Granting hold the question for your assess. Okay, and there's a site plan, if you site plan approval, bulk variance is city engineer and HEP soil con conservation, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Aguaviva, we have no other conditions on this, correct? I did not hear any. I didn't hear any modifications on the record. Okay, great. Okay, do I have a second? Second, Mr. Second. Commissioner Santana, I heard, I heard commissioners. I, I, it was kind of feedback, but I heard. I thought I heard Commissioner Santana, and then Crystal Cleves came in next. But we'll go Commissioner Santana. Am I correct? That's correct, please. That's fine. Okay. Commissioner Santana, second. Roll call, please. Commissioners, Commissioner Fisher. Commissioner Fisher, I don't see his number here. I think he has left the meeting. No, I'm right here. Oh, you're there? Um, well, my apologies, Commissioner. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Now, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Cleves. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Santana. Yes. Commissioner Eugene. Then absolutely, yes. Thank you. Um, and Chairwoman Northrop. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Uh, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner, I think they Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, speakers don't leave yet. Okay, um, I don't think we have any resolutions for this evening. Am I correct? That's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, but now our next, uh, our next meeting, I just want to see here, should be, am I correct in saying it's on the 14th? Monday, September 14th. So we have also made two special meetings, I think, on the 14th. Okay, so we'll see everybody then. I want to make a motion uh, to close the meeting. We'll have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Cleese. I see Fisher now. Okay, hi, Fisher. Okay, um, and uh, all in favor, obviously, aye. Uh, okay, have a good evening. What's left of it, and we'll see everybody. Before we, uh, before we leave the meeting, I will be sending everyone the information regarding the arrangements, funeral arrangements for Wayne Witherspoon. Right, okay. Madam Secretary? Yes, sir. Did you also put out the information to help with this? Yes, I did. Everyone has received a donation um, GoFundMe page for Wayne Witherspoon. Um, there have been some donations already placed today, as I've seen, and I did uh, bring it out to everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone, and uh, see you on the 14th. Or I see you before that. Bye. Bye. Bye.